Tommy, are you freaking that you don't have a phone? Yeah, like, it's, well, it, it's not even that I don't have a phone. I don't have a single phone number. You know, like, I kept all my pictures of my kids on my phone. All of that's gone. And it's not even so much that it's gone, but it's where did it go? You know, like, who? Right? I guess I said I didn't want to sign up for Obamacare. I guess they didn't give a fuck. They were going to force me to. <laughs> You know, and then it's really interesting to hear that there's reports of, you know, Seattle running these machines that are doing this. Right. That's, you know, we're, I'm not that, we're not that far. No. I mean, in, in, if, if they're doing it in Seattle, I mean, who's to say that they're not doing it over here? I mean, it, it was almost like, um, I, I felt that it was almost like synchronistic that, right. um, that, he, that he actually said that tonight. Yeah, he, like, he was like, oh, I, like, it wasn't like a sticker shock to him. You know? Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, we, we th this has been happening. And he's like, and, you know, we know we know about this. This is going on. And I'm like, oh, well, I wish I would have known about that before they wiped out my phone. <laughs> yeah. You know, what, I mean, what are you supposed to do? So, I don't know. It's weird. I'm going to have to buy a new phone, obviously. I knew everything, so. I just, you know, I mean, it, it really, and then when you tell me about that document... Right, and that's what's really weird. And, and then I was like, I was like, I'll go. Fuck! I downloaded that on my hard drive. I, I, I was like at work going, I need to get that off my my computer. You know, I was like, I, you know, I, I was like, they're gonna be knocking at my door. Cause like one time my cousin, um, my my cousin got this like this like she had like a a. a a card on her door and she calls her mom and goes, mom, the federal bureau investigative group just left their, uh, a card on my, on my, and you know, the same that they stopped, dropped on, they came by and, and, and she goes, what, what is that? And my aunt goes, that's the FBI. <laughs> okay. So they come and they investigate my cousin who, um, because apparently she, something to do with bongs or something on the internet had something to do with like, online. like pay, like pages of something to do with, I think bongs or something to do with marijuana. And, um, of course she was innocent, but they were thinking that maybe like one of her boyfriends, you know, that she was guys that she was dating, you know, got on her computer yeah, while she, she went to the shower, took a shower or something and, you know, looked at something that apparently was a red flag for them to come over and knock at her fucking door and ask to see her computer. I'm like, oh, my God, I, I have I go, this is going to happen to me. They're going to come at my door. And, you know, I had this whole <laughs> my imagination like went crazy for a moment. Well, it's weird because what you're reading is like a pre-agreement to what they're supposed to go and sign next week. So you're looking at like the pre-agreement, and if you actually know how to read it, it's got the negotiator's notes in there, which is really weird. So you can read like, not only can you read what the proposal, like what the proposed is, and like in what countries are for it, what are against it, and their reasons why, but then you get the negotiator's notes, like side notes of what he thinks, and it's it, it's just hilarious, you know, to see. And it's very, really cleverly worded, and there's a couple of sections in there that are really interesting where it, they, they're talking about – a lot of it's about trademarks, copyrights. Ownership. Yeah, that's what I noticed about it. I mean, like, I haven't really been right. able to look at it too much yet because I've right. fucking been working but and busy. I mean – and you seem to understand it better than me. I was I was looking at like, but it looked like trademarks. And I'm like, well, what is this? Is this like about patenting and and you yeah, know like it's exactly it's the old it's thing they were trying to fight in the first place about them taking over the internet that we won't that's, have. It's exactly what it is. It, 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 they're creating a law that they're going to put into effect that basically gives them control of that and everything over the internet. And it's and they're and they're breaking it down and they're trying to come to agreements to where you know it'll work and. <laughs> It's just pretty ridiculous because they snuck some weird stuff in there. Um, and the weird stuff they snuck in there is there's a section where all of a sudden it stops. And in the, in the wording, it says, from here on out, every time you see something in, per, like, in parentheses, we're no longer talking about this. We're talking about this. And when I was like, well, what's this about? And I looked into it. turns out it's, it's plant life, species. They're talking about plants. And I'm like, why are they all arguing over copywriting or patenting a plant? <laughs> Welcome to your trillion-dollar industry. 
Are you, are they talking about us? Are they talking about the no, cannabis no, plant? No, I believe they're talking about cannabis. That's what I was going to ask you. Absolutely. They're talking about I, I, I there's sections in there where it changes from technology to uh, it plants. And they even have listed like on their, their the, the stuff that the, like the stuff that they talk about has to come from other like treaties that are already in effect. So they have this one on like this treaty for like the species of plants. Everything's all technological and then all of a sudden you have this like treaty for the species of plants. And so it's very cleverly worded, but basically it seems like they're all trying to figure out whether or not they can patent and trademark a plant. And the, the big argument is, is because of geographical ta- geography, you know, geography tags, you know, like you can, you know, you can uh, patent or trademark something based off geography, like a location, like this is where its home is, like this is where it was invented, this is where it grows, right? Uh-huh. So it's like doing that, but it grows everywhere. It's a weed. <laughs> you know, it's very weird. Where did you find this document at? Uh, I didn't. It was sent to me. Somebody sent this to you? Right after, okay, so, uh, yeah, so somebody uh, added me into a group, right? And I went uh. and checked it out, because they just manually added me. Uh-huh. And, I'll go, and I'll go look at the group if I want to be in there, I'll stay. If I don't, I actually kind of like the group, so I stayed. Uh, after he noticed I stayed, he had posted, like, welcome to the group. I said, oh, thank you, you know, whatever. Uh, and then he messaged me, and we started talking. And then uh, the next day, boom, he's like, you should check this out. And he sent it to me. And what what is it? It's a wiki, is it a WikiLeak? It it was. It was a WikiLeak. Yeah, the 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 URL is gone. It's black. It, I mean, they took it down. That's why. It, but I have my own hard copy <laughs> at this point. Yeah. And um, so in it, it's got you know a, a discussion about the different um, pat patents, you know, or I guess yeah, like. I, it, 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 it's the rights of patents, trademarks, digital media, the Digital Media Copyright Act, um, digital media. I mean, there was a section in there talking about, like, radio, you know, radio. And it's funny to see, you know, what was really good about it is it was really funny to see what countries were really for some crazy shit and then what, and just the funniest countries that were, like, opposed to everything. Like, Mexico, Vietnam, and Brunei are all for copyright and everything right except for any sort of digital media like no movies no radio no tv you guys can't copy that because we want to bootleg the fuck out of it <laughs> so it's really funny like so it's like it's just weird to, you know to, to read and then what i really liked is the only person who wouldn't agree the only country that wouldn't agree to like two-thirds of everything in there was canada and in the negotiator's notes, it would say why Canada wouldn't agree. And a lot of the times, Canada was like, uh, I'm going to need a clear definition on what you mean by this. <laughs> they wanted to, you're going to have to explain what you mean by this, because this is very generic wording, and it opens a lot of doors, and we're not sure we agree to that. Canada was totally, like, slowing the process down and arguing everything. They, like, they weren't for it. And everybody else was like, come on, Canada, get out. You know, Canada's that one dentist out of four or five. Out of, <laughs> out of ten dentists recommend. <laughs> Canada was the, just that one dentist that will never jump on board. <laughs> you know? And I was just like, oh, my God. I was like, I, I, and you know what? But Canada was right. And, you know, because the way it was worded is it left a lot of, like, gaps, that, you know. And then there's things that just the U.S. say, and it was funny to see that there's like a couple of countries that no matter what the U.S. proposes, they're for it. They're just like, we're for it. <laughs> and they don't say anything. You know, Which they, countries are those? Ah, uh, well, Jerusalem was one. <laughs> okay. And uh, and it was weird because they don't have a say in anything. Like, they don't say anything but until, like, U.S. stands alone. Then all of a sudden they're like, we second it. <laughs> it was just like, a, it, was like a, it was like an extra vote for the U.S., uh, and then there was uh, one other one, um, and I don't even know which one it is. Its abbreviation was CL, and I still haven't figured that out who they are. CL, 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 CL. A lot of it was if they wanted to break, like patent, or if they wanted to like take stuff, they had to report to the WT, uh, the, the the WTO, the World Trade Organization, and it was just really weird. 
So what do you, what do you think? What I mean, like obviously the the world is working towards something that is actually really rather outside of the box. I mean, like like we think about like um you know pa- like our our trademarks and this and that and all that kind of stuff is like our YouTubes and everything. It's it's a it's it's an it's it's an, a country America thing and we you know but we realize that there are things that are it looks like there's just things being decided for us that's worldwide that isn't necessarily is in the interest of any of us basically well, basically what i read as it goes on you know as you get through it is that they understand that we're moving into a technology age like a, an age of like technology and they want to control what you can and can't see and they want to control the internet they want to keep control the internet completely if you think they control it now you have no clue what they're talking about they're talking about boxing it cutting it off they, they, they talk about literally like having rights to what access you can have to it what access they can have to you and, and and the difference between public and private sectors so as a public as as a citizen what your rights are and then as a private sector what your rights were and they were completely different so like if you're the government you can do whatever the hell you want but uh, if you're just a private citizen you're only going to get this much of the uh, and they talk about how they're going to do that and how they're going to build these these new servers that'll actually do that like control the information that's a lot that goes in and out yeah but you know couldn't we i mean let's say i mean like yeah they they have technology but you know isn't i mean there's some smart people around here that could actually do their own version of this and we can just all access a whole nother system i mean couldn't we just all skip to another system besides this one we wouldn't have the servers to hold it but what if we created our servers Someone would have to build them, and I, I mean, that would have to be somebody with a whole lot of money. And I'm not sure if we tried to do that and started buying that stuff, if they wouldn't just shut us down. It's almost like, you know, trying to build a rocket. Yeah, but yeah. how are they going to stop us from sending, I mean, let, okay, let's say I make a video, and I don't put it on YouTube. I just have a video, and I have a huge email list. And I, you know, I have an email, uh, you know, account with um, somebody in Italy, and it's a friend of mine, and I give him live footage, or I email him footage of, like, a protest that's happening. See, in- see you won't even have access to that. that. That's the whole thing. They basically want to use the internet for knowledge only, for educational purposes, and then they want to control what ed- what you can use it for. That's why they want to take away like things like Skype, internet radio, uh, and that's very well listed in there. They talk about it specifically, about use, especially free services that allow people to use trademarked or intellectual property, so, uh, you know, that let them push their intellectual property and trademark goods through these free services. They don't want that at all. And then they say, if that's the case, if you do that, then they now own it. And if they own it, they can press the stop button and delete it at any time they want to. And that's kind of the bigger issue. And they do have the power to do that. And they're building these giant servers as we speak in Utah, which I find really funny that they're having this meeting in Utah. Oh, yeah? I don't find it so funny now, do you? No, I, 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 I knew what I was reading, you know what I'm saying? And it starts off harmless enough. You know, like they talk to you, but after you get to like into like page 30 and you start realizing how sinister and deep and dark it's going and what they're actually controlling, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. And none of it's in effect yet. Like this is all their like proposals and whatnot. And that's what they're supposed to do next week in Utah. It's come to some final agreement. So I find that interesting. It is what it is, but apparently they found it interesting too and decided to wipe my phone or the or the mystery uh, mysterious police wiping machine out of Seattle has made its way down to Portland and found me. <laughs> and just you. And Every- just me. Right? <laughs> Everybody else's phone is fine. Yeah, well, so I went and took the hard copy that I had and uh, uploaded it as a file on Facebook, and within like my maybe my fourth post, Facebook had already blocked it taking it down and blocked it. 
I mean, they, they, every time I tried to repost, it would say content unavailable, content unavailable. I think it stayed up a few places where I had already posted it, but they wouldn't let me keep posting it at all. And I've never had that happen before. I even took a, a screenshot of that. It's on trips. You can go see it for yourself. <laughs> do you, I mean, do you feel scared? Of what? Of what? What are they going to do? I mean, literally, what, what, what are they going to do? Uh, no, I, I don't feel scared. I'm not scared of them. I could really care less, you know? Uh, they wipe my phone, boo-hoo. I mean, there's nothing on there, you know, that's gonna, you know, do anything to really do anything. It's just, it just pisses me off, <laughs> you know? Uh, but other than that, I don't feel scared. Uh, I, you know, I think it's a warning, and I think if I, if it's happening to people like me, it's happening to everybody else, whether they know it or not. You know, one of the really good comments somebody brought up to me was, if you look at all newer smartphones as of, like, two this year, right, and up, almost all of them don't have a detachable battery. You can't take the battery off. So no matter whether your phone's plugged in or not or it tells you your battery's dead, they can turn it on and have access to it. You can't, so it used to be if you didn't want them to track you through your phone, you take the battery SIM card out, break your phone or something, you, can't, you don't have that choice anymore. The battery's built in without a, without a back that opens up. Mm hmm. They're all solid, one piece. They're getting smarter. <laughs> you know? So, and, and I was like, somebody brought that up to me, and I'm like, well, that's interesting. I was like, now you don't have the option to disconnect your phone. That's, um, you know, that I, I'm, I'm like, yeah. I'm I mean, does your phone battery come off? Um, no, it does not. Exactly. It, it, you know, that's one of the things that I kind of noticed. I, I used to have a Blackberry. I was, I was kind of old school, if you will, <laughs> you know? I mean, old school, like, I can't afford anything else but this, you know, right. kind of thing. And, um... But I had a BlackBerry curve, and I could take the battery out. When it got all jammed up, you know, it's like I rebooted it by pulling the battery out of it and putting it in again. This one, I realized I needed to reboot my computer. I felt I needed to reboot it, but then now they've told me how to do it. But I, I looked for the battery, and I realized it wasn't there. Yeah. That's, uh, and that's my, that's my point exactly. There's, a, there's the reason for that is so you can't ever, you can't ever really disconnect your phone. Even if it tells you the battery's dead and it's not operating the phone, it's got enough juice if they want to, like, you know, track it. Uh huh. So even if your phone's turned off, they can still track it. So I mean, that's just crazy. I think that you know, it's just insane, you know. And they literally was in there. They were talking about spying on people, like monitoring and it was just a really weird you know thing to see go you know to see that many countries 12 countries that own almost 50 percent of the world's gdp talking about this you know and the way it's written i mean it was all written in like legal mumbo jumbo but like the way it was so casual there <laughs> it was so i mean for me i thought one of the best parts is when it did like the digital media stuff and they're talking about trademarking it Everybody's like trademark, patent, everything, right? Except for Mexico uh, and the other one, uh, Brunei and um, Vietnam. They're all, you can copy and patent and trademark everything except for anything that makes noise. <laughs> <laughs> Basically movies, radio, you know, like any sort of, they're like, because... The way it's written, this is their, this is what they said, and it was a really good legal kind of like, and they're like, everybody else is like, okay, well, we'll rewrite this. They're going to try to rewrite it. But the way it was written was to trademark something, you have to have a physical sign, a trademark physical sign visible, right? Uh -huh. And they claim that any trademark given by sound isn't a physical sign, so therefore it's not trademarkable, which would be any sort of radio or digital media, you know, anybody, you know, I mean, I guess you can put a sign on a movie, uh -huh. They might have the sign on there, but even so, I don't know. But like you know, and most people, you know, it, it, most things, it's it, it's done audio wise. So it's done audio. And Mexico didn't pretty really, Mexico didn't want to like um, pretty much patent or trademark anything other than scents, which was funny. They were okay with doing it with colognes and perfumes. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> don't rob our perf. Don't rob our scents, but. 
don't you don't get to keep your movies. <laughs> like this is really kind of fun to want to read <laughs> once i started figuring out how to read it and i knew what countries were saying what was by the way i just found out cl is chili okay so it was chili so, so chili is, is and it is is sucking america's dick and so is Jerus <laughs> jerusalem yeah yeah who are, yeah they're like two extra votes for fucking the united states on everything australia was kind of funny australia was like pretty much okay with everything until it came up to like we all have to work together and if we request this information you have to get you have to work with us and if you request information we'll work with you australia was like fuck you they're like it's okay if we ask you for shit if you want to give it to us but if you come knocking on our door don't expect us to open it <laughs> <laughs> no dave's not here man <laughs> That's totally what I got out of that. <laughs> just like, they didn't want to share information with anybody. They didn't want anybody else to come and ask questions. They're like, we got this. We don't need, you're, you know. It was funny. It was, it's pretty weird. It's a weird, it's a, it's a weird document. And, you know, it, and I did put it up. I'm pretty sure it's probably been got, taken down by now in most of the places. I don't know if it's still up in trips. But, uh, um, the, you know the actual document itself, uh, it won't be so weird. I'll be able to show it to everybody after next week. You know what I'm saying? Because after uh -huh. next week, once it's signed and it's in effect, who cares, you know? They just don't want you to know ahead of time. And apparently it was uh, given to them. Did you see that? On uh, April 30th. So that's when it was issued for, to all the countries or to whoever got copies of that. So... They've been sitting on that. It was uh, issued April 30th, and then the meeting is scheduled for the 19th through the 24th, uh, I believe, in Utah. Who is this group? Who? I mean, is it? I mean, is this the Bilderbergers? I mean, like, who? Who are it's, these? It's the Trans Pacific Partnership. That's what it's called. The, it's the Trans Pacific Partnership. It's 12 countries all together. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have the list right in front of me because there's some weird ones on there, but it's like Malaysia, Vietnam, Australia, Brunei, uh, Chile, obviously the United States. So it's not the whole world. No, there's only 12 countries. Oh, okay. There's only 12 countries, uh, and, um, they own, but they own 40% of the world's GDP. These 12 countries own 40% of everything in the world. So I believe the Philippines was on there. Um, I don't know. There was a, I mean, there's twelve of them, obviously. So there's a bunch. There was twelve. What's the Philippines know. stance? They just, uh, you know, a couple places. Uh, Philippines, pretty much, and a couple of places just pretty much went with it. They just pretty much we agreed. To, they just agreed to all the consensus. They didn't argue to anybody's proposal or not. They just uh, anytime anybody asked, well, we agree, and they're like, they got the team that would, you know oppose it would be like well what do you think about this and they go oh yeah that's better we agree and then they'd be like <laughs> ripping their hair out because they're like these guys just agree to anything <laughs> they did they just were kind of like yep yeah, sure we agree with the consent it just said at the negotiators notes would say they agree with the consensus <laughs> on everything so when everybody else hashed out they were going along with it well, uh, we got a, a couple more friends on trips. A couple of my friends, a couple of my friends joined. I noticed. Nice. Um, yeah, I was starting to watch. Yeah, so I, uh, one one of the guys from um, Global Illumination Council uh, asked for Jim Whitkus. Uh, nice. He's an administrator. Um, asked, asked to join us, and Trevor Knott too is also an administrator. So, so some of the other guys that are administrators on the site joined us. Yeah, well, I posted that, you know, and I got that document onto like two anonymous sites before they kicked me that off. Um, and I've got tons of likes on those anonymous sites for posting that freaking wick, that, that dark blacked out wiki link because I posted it as a file. So it's not a download. It's not a, it's not a web link. They can just download it. How? Um, the Bruce Campbell, um, picture's gotten some interesting comments. Oh, I didn't see the thread. What are, what are people saying? Um, well, uh, you know, people have liked it. It's, it's gotten some shares. Right? Some people have shared it on their, Yeah. 
Um, and, uh, you know, they've asked me, one guy said, oh, is that a toy gun? I go, no, it's real. And he goes, well, what, you know, what, what is, is it a shotgun? And I go, no, I only shotgun weed, you know, um, is one of the comments. Um, and, you know, I've gotten, one guy goes, we got to kill these motherfucking politicians. You know, I'm like, I didn't feel like I better like that one. Cause I'm like, you know, so that, that could get me in trouble. You don't want to condone that. No, 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 no. I don't want to condone that behavior because it's violent. And we, I don't That's condone violence in your own life. Right. Like the mass march. You know what I'm saying? We had like two or three guys in the crowd carrying those crazy signs. At the same time, we had all these cops, and I, I kind of think it was all set up, you know, to, like, try to start something, a riot, you know, like, try, but nobody jumped, nobody, you know. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of, I, I didn't do a like on that one, because because I don't condone it, and, and, you know, it's like, no, that's not that's not what I'm saying here, you know. Um, one guy said, um, uh, we need to get rid of the people who believe in the Second Amendment, um, you know, I, I don't know if people, I mean, I think people, I don't know if they know that I'm, uh, what stance I'm actually really taking on it, you know, right. I mean, so, I mean, that's why I kind of like it, because it kind of puts it in the precarious, like, hmm, is it anti or for, you know, I mean, I right. think you can flip it around, um, but I, I wanted to see what the reaction was. Oh, Darren, uh, Darren Dorenzo says it's sexy and, um, and, you know, like right to the, like he really, he gave it a big thumbs up and a smile. And then he says, what? Cause I made a mention that we feel like we shot it in Utah and he goes, what are you guys, are you guys trying to like, you know, are you going after the Mormons there or something like that? He made some sort of crack or joke right. about that. So I thought that was kind of. Oh, the Mormons invited us. <laughs> I, go, I thought that was it was the Mormons' guns. <laughs> you, yeah, know, right? you know, uh, yeah, you know. The Mormons got fucking guns. <laughs> Talking about people with guns and they're like poor guns. It was like you know the Mormons gave it to us. You know. The Mormons. You know what? Say what you will about Mormons, but they got an arsenal. I saw it with my own eyes. Yeah, I mean, wasn't like they're looking at like, well, make sure that you don't, you know, like when you, it's okay to carry around, just don't beat around kids or near a schoolyard or children. And then like it's a freaking like you know schoolyard, like within like a few feet of like a RVs parked in front of a park. And he's like, hurry, hurry, we gotta get it. They're gonna be let out by three thirty. It was like, I go, how much time we have? Like fifteen minutes. I go, fuck, you know. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> it was it was kind of an exciting shoot actually, and I love the Bruce Camp like like the fact that there's a toilet and a white picket fence right. in that in, in you know in that thing is just like, it makes it really you know I don't know it couldn't have, couldn't have been more perfect really. Right. It was it was a good shot. Yeah yeah. yeah. So um, I'm gonna do a little video um, with it with all the different pictures and I I'm, I'm you know that song by it's called Lagrange by ZZ Top. Right. And I like play that. And then, and then and there, I'm going to cut some, um, I did a, a show on gun control for Hollywood Hempers Hour. I'm going to cut these little, like, snippets of information. That'd be cool. In it, interspersely, and, you know, to kind of just, that's, that's my head, that's, I want to get that done by this weekend, hopefully. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. And then I can plug, like, trips and, like, everything on it, you know, in the ending credits. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd yeah. Be fun, that'd be a fun little video. Yeah, that'd yeah. So and I, I think it's timely right now. Like it, like it's coming to a head. I mean, well, it, yeah, I it's, it's you know, starting, well, they, they, they're starting to realize, you know, as these as they keep getting closer to whatever they're gonna do. I mean, obviously because they keep. I mean, I mean, have you seen this thing about there's supposed to be an attack tomorrow? No. In L.A. or today? Today no. in L.A. There is um, tons of stuff going around. All these news reports that there's uh, some sort of false flag event that the government has planned and is supposedly uh, supposed to happen in Los Angeles today, the 15th. Here, let me find it real quick, and I'll tell you. Okay. Let's see. And what's funny is North Black actually posted this in trips probably about five days ago. Really? Yes, but it was it, but it was on like a, it was like kind of like on a website that I was like yeah so I didn't really think about it you know what I'm saying but now it's coming from some actual news sources so let me do this All right. 
So, I'm waiting for it to open here. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Warning, imminent, oh, it's moving on me, let's see, there you go, imminent false flag attack versus LA scheduled for November 15th. Anonymous has indicated that they have information which leads them to believe that a false flag event similar to the Twin Tower attacks in New York is in the works for the City Bank building. The chief tenant of that building at this time is Freddie Mac, thank God. <laughs> uh... Spectators gathered to watch SWAT team members and get... What is this? I don't even know. Who knows if this is true, but here is, here it is. Judge for yourselves. The city bank building that is currently occupied by Freddie Mac just recently dropped all insurance policies except for the policy portion, portion which contains special conditions, coverages related to terrorism, which is all risk of direct physical damage. The certificate holder for this policy is located... It gives the address. It says... Uh, under Heinzboff, a private insurance company which offers loss adjusters, all state claims adjuster, integrated insurance property, or whatever. Similar to the description of the Twin Towers, changes were made to their insurance policies prior to the so called terrorist attacks on 9 11. Although we are not 100% sure if these horrific activities being planned to transpire within the next few days, we did not want to take a chance and risk losing any more innocent lives and have a repeat of 9 11 in New York. Uh, and then it has the anonymous one where it basically says, like, what, what anonymous wrote. But they're talking about, like, I guess people, they were out, I guess they have, like, pictures and they were out in front of the city bank practicing for it. And are somewhere in L.A. practicing for it in, like, the middle of the street. But it could be a movie set, I don't know, because it kind of looks like everybody, but they said it was, a. Uh, Domestic scenes of SWAT teams closed down part of L.A. in terror alert, but don't worry, it's just a drill. <laughs> Jesus. There's always these drills going on when they do these type of things, too, you know? But uh, Anonymous says, greeting citizens of the world, we are anonymous. We have received intel related to the possible destruction of one of downtown Los Angeles' towers being set up as a false flag event on Friday, November 15, 2013. Over the weekend, SWAT teams were conducting drills in downtown Los Angeles, unlike any completed in the past. The city bank building that is currently occupied by Freddie Mac just recently dropped all insurance policies except for the policy portion, which contains special conditions, coverage related to terrorism, which is all risk of direct physical damage. And then it goes off pretty much to give, like, a... Do you think that, um... Or it keeps going, hold on, it pretty much goes into what I already read, but it goes on past that. It's uh, probably not going to happen now, though, because because it's been leaked out. Unless, 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 that's what, unless that's what they're wanting to have that's happen. And then it says, the buildings in question are the Citibank building, which is located adjacent to the U.S. Bank building on the corner of South Flower and West 5th Street. It is believed to be the target for a false flag event set for this Friday. We ask American citizens who work in this area of Los Angeles, California, to take extra precautions. It is advisable, given the severity of this information, if you are employed and are working or conducting personal matters in either the Citibank or U.S. Bank Towers of Los Angeles, that you stay away from these two structures on that day. This is a warning, and again, as a precautionary measure, we alert you of this possible false flag event being set up in the city of Los Angeles. Oh my God, I know exactly where that's at. To the shareholders of these policies, you have been warned. We do not forgive, we do not forget, ex except to be held accountable for your actions if you follow through with your sinister agenda. We will not tolerate your wicked greed in pursuit of more wealth and, re and restructure. We are anonymous. We do not forgive, we do not forget, except us. So that's how they end that. But it's being picked up by news organizations. And what I find is very awkward about that is when we did the Million Man uh, or the Million Mask March, they gave us a media black, black blackout. Right. Yet they 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 go ahead and post uh, a false flag warning, and every media center jumps on it. Okay, so what's up with that? 
I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, it's, you know, here's, it almost seems like they want to like, like out themselves and go, yeah, I, 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 we are doing false flags. We are fucking with you. Now what? Now, now we just went on war on you. Well, I mean, this is that, is that it? Pretty much. I mean, and, and if they did it, and if they actually do it, if something happens to that tower today in L.A., I'm pretty much sure that would be the start of the next, uh, probably civil war. The revolution would probably start right then and there. I mean, because you, you, everybody already knows, you know, at this point, people are becoming aware of what they're doing. And at this point, if they just keep doing it, it's pretty bad. But there's pictures of what they did to downtown L.A. And I'll send you the link. Okay. Let me get back on skate here. There you go. Um, great. Okay. Um, let me see. What the hacktivist group warning intimate false flag attacks? Yeah, but if you scroll through it, you'll uh -huh. we'll see the, the pictures of the drill. All right. Oh my God, really? Yeah. Wow. That's I bet thing. people were pissed off about traffic that day. Yeah, right? This God, I would, and then I'd be, this is a fucking drill. I'd be, fuck you, motherfuckers. Well, it kind of <laughs> looks like they are. Like, if you go down to the... Uh, are those all crisis up? actors? Boy, they must have been a big casting call in L.A. that day. Carried You've away, got it. They must be like paying them. these people. They don't. People in L.A. don't do shit like this for free. Trust me. Oh no! If you look down towards the bottom, like uh, if you go all the way to the, like one of the bottom pictures. Yeah, look at there's like a person on the ground, and it looks like it's crashed and spun out. <laughs> yep. A couple dead people in the middle of the street. You got people pointing and screaming and yelling from inside the crowd, taking pictures. It's like a tourist group at Universal Studios or something. What a bizarre photo. What a bizarre photo. Wow. Um, wait. Okay. Right? So that's what they were doing in downtown LA this weekend. And, and then right then and there, you got, you know, and I do find it very awkward that that, that tower would drop all of its insurance. It, in a like town full of actors and wannabe, actor wannabes, dramatic scenes as SWAT teams close down part of L.A. in terror alert. But don't worry, it's just a drill. Spectators gathered to watch the terrorism scenarios get played out, including an actor pretending to detonate a suicide vest. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. And then, and then, and then you have Citibank, which is pretty much, you know, running Freddie Mac, which is ran by Freddie Mac. They have all the money in the world, and they dropped all their insurance policies except for the one that says... If we're hit by terrorists, we get quadruple our money. And well, what gets me here is go spectators gathered to watch terrorism scenarios get played out, including okay. And then it says the live demonstration on the streets of downtown LA was part of a 2013 National Homeland Security Conference. Weird. Um, these images would, could be mistaken for scenes from a Hollywood movie, just what you said. Right. But instead, the action was part of a counterterrorism drill by Los Angeles law enforcement officials held on Thursday. Oh, somebody got some overtime. SWAT team members engaged actors and police officers pretending to be terrorists during a live demonstration on the streets of downtown LA for the 2013 National Homeland Security Conference. The purpose of the drill conducted by the law enforcement officials from the L.A. Police Department, L.A. Sheriff Department, was to highlight various counterterrorism tactics 
in response to mock an incident involving armed gunmen and weapons of mass destruction. Are you fucking kidding me? Spectators gathered to watch as an actor pretended to detonate a suicide SWAT team's members and pretend terrorists shot and pretend terrorists shot at each other. Wow, they're really putting on a big scene here. Uh -huh. Other scenarios being played out during the drill included a remote-controlled bomb squad forklifting a truck and a SWAT team members descending from a helicopter. Hi, wow. High drama SWAT police appear to shoot dead a criminal in a daylight gunfight, but it was just a drill. An actor pretending to detonate suicide... That's the one with the guy running with, with the, the vest is shot by law enforcement of officials from the Los Angeles Police Department and Los Angeles Sheriff Department while a victim lies on the ground. Photo rooters. Okay, here's. Okay, so here's this. Here's this scene with this guy. One guy's like just his legs are up in the air, like his body just smashed into a ground, like he just fell out of some, the plane. I, I, I'm, I'm gathering. And no, then. I, where are you? You're looking at something completely different. I mean, there's all these scenarios. They're showing pictures of the guy with the vest. You went into, uh, An actor pretending to detonate Susan. Okay, yeah, they got more. They got a bunch of pictures here. Yeah, I gotta go into that one. Um, there's like um, SWAT team members engage actors pretending to be terrorists in response to a mock incident revolving around armed government weapons and mass. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah, there's so many pictures. Oh, and then they have the media. Oh, look at this. They were filming it. A bomb squad robot works with law enforcement officials. A robot. A bomb squad fucking robot comes to the rescue. A remote control bomb squad for... Okay. A robot. Homeland Security Conference. And they're carrying these bodies out. Carried away... Man. Yeah. I think it's very clever for somebody to find that they drop all their insurance, you know what I'm saying? And then put the two together. You know, I mean, that's, it, it's crazy, right? <clears throat> that's supposed to happen today. We'll see. Fuck. I, you know what? I mean, this is just, every time, sometimes we take the show and I just sit back and I go, what the fuck? I mean, like, it just gets more and more, you know, uh, intrigued as to what's, as to what's happening. It's like, they, like, I really feel since we started this, there's like something happening, like right in front of our eyes. It's probably always been there. We're just, we, we, we're just being awakened to it. And we, you know, and, uh, I believe it's our goal to try to educate and awaken others because it, it's, you know, it's happening. They do it, you know, crazy. They're doing it crazy. It's just going, you know, when, you know. I remember when I was a kid, they, you, know, you, you watch the news and bad things happen. It, something bad might happen, but it was like once in a while. Now it's like every other couple of weeks, some like mass destruction somewhere, some shooting, some crazy shooting somewhere, and then all the information you find out that you get about it was totally false. All the people they interviewed that were victims were crisis actors. And then you start questioning, did the thing even happen? Right. You know, there's all of these events, and, and, and they're blatant. They're doing, them, they're doing them more, like, faster. They're doing them more. They're doing them closer together. They're, they're, they're picking it. It's like a ball rolling downhill. It's picking up speed. It's just going to go, you know, and, and it's leading up to something else, uh, you know, and... That's, you know, it's, it, 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 it's a, it, the only thing that's going to stop it is us, our people who stand up, you know. The issue is, is you've got to do something about it. You can't just sit here and be like, well, you know, nobody else is doing anything, so I don't want to do anything. Well, that's the cause of the problem. Maybe if you did something, somebody else would do something. Change the, change, change the way you think about it. You know what, you know, I'm, and it, you know, it's really irritating me, you know, like sometimes I'll look at like my timeline on Facebook because, you know, things just seem so intense right now. And right. then it'll be like, this person will just like be, oh, I'm over here, blah, 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 about me, about me. And like these little like quips that go, I, I just get, I just feel annoyed. <laughs> right. 
I feel like, annoyed. Like, I'm like, oh, skip that person. Don't even look at their. Don't don't look at their post. Don't look at their post. They just, people just, people you know what I mean? It's like it's like it's straight. It's yeah. They don't have time to care. A lot of people are like, oh, I just don't care. I don't have time for that. I don't got time for that. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what everybody. You know, this is, they just don't have time for it. They just don't care. They say it doesn't affect them. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't affect you. Well, let's see. How much money do you make? Oh, not, right. Like, and how much do you spend on? Okay. And how much do you pay? On taxes. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And where's that money going? Oh, you don't know. Wouldn't you like to have some of it? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to keep it? You know, because right now it's going to pay these assholes who are fucking everything up. You know, if you want to go on vacation, you want to go somewhere. Guess what? You got to have a million dollars. Why? Because the dollar isn't worth shit. Because we have nothing to back it but a bunch of debt. I actually talked to a guy today. Um, this this is what this is what he said. Because I'm I'm a fundraising for um, to stop fracking. Right. And uh, and the guy says, um, well, you know, I'm not really I'm not really sure if I'm with you on this, uh, you know. And, and and he said, you know, they I'm not sure how much damage it actually actually really is doing. And you know, and and uh, and and he and he said, and he goes, and you know, I mean, they are like or Halib or Exxon Mobil. I mean, they are like one of the gas companies I mentioned because they are like the third largest corporation in the world. I mean, come on. I mean, you, you know, uh, like 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 obviously because they're such a big corporation, I, I I might as well just trust them. They've got to be doing something right. They can't be damaging the planet. It's Exxon Mobil. I'm like, really? <laughs> like that's your reason to trust them that they're their third largest company in the world. You know, yeah. I mean, corporation, third yeah. largest corporation in the world. I go, no, you know, it's fucking criminal. All right. It was third largest corporation in the world. Absolutely. That's your assurance that what I'm saying on the phone about the water being polluted and you know this i mean destroying the earth and you and you're gonna oh no it's the largest corporation in the world uh you oh. know the, the one the, the third largest i they've got to be they've got to be doing they can't be doing that you know, they, you're just fucking crazy asking me for money to stop something that the corporation because it's the third largest is is like gives me the assurance everything's yeah. okay i'm like oh my fucking god I, I wanted I wanted to I, I I I go well you know what I understand sir um I you know that you have a different opinion and thank you so much for, for supporting in this past um you know have a have a wonderful evening I went fuck you you fucking moron you know I literally like said I have to take a break I can't even I it really it it, it makes me angry it's angry enough to where I'm talking about it right now I'm like but the thing of it is is there are people out there who that's how they think. That's yep. what they believe. That's where they're at. Yeah, they just trust. They just trust what they see on TV. They trust what they read in their magazine. You know, if the, if the TV, if the guy on TV says this is the way it is, then that's the way it is. And he's, a, you could tell, like he sounded, he tried to, he sounded like he was very intellectual, and his yeah. attitude was like, I know more than you do, you you woman that's calling me up, asking me oh. to like, you know, give me he's money that, you know, it had this like arrogant fucking blatant like I'm an educated man I've got a degree kind of attitude and I was just like really like I it's almost like it was it was like Ugh. yeah <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, they have no they really have no thought process they do whatever they're told they're they're pretty much robots they're sheep and I've met tons of them uh, you know, when I was in, uh, a and they're puppets. Where, That's the part that irritates me. Right. Well, you know what? And it's even if they all, they all are, and it doesn't matter what class they are, because I li I was in Nebraska, podunk place in Nebraska, where this is probably the poor, one of the poorest places I had ever seen. These people were poor. Work there didn't pay shit. You know what I'm saying? They all lived in trailers. You know, it was just it was weird. Yet they all voted. They all were like. Weird, really weird, like Fox News, right wing, like, and I was like, and they voted for weird shit, and I like Tea Party shit, and I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> you guys realize that you guys like, oh yeah, like, how's that? How's that mobile mansion going for you? You know, like, <laughs> I, I just never really understood. Like, they they were their own worst enemy. As far as their economy and the way they voted, 
It was really weird. I mean, let me tell you how stupid they are. There was, this is a, I can't, I, I'm not making this up. This is true. Riding around in the car, listening to the radio. It's, you know, it, it's almost, it's voting time, right? This commercial comes on and it says, hi, my name's Kathy. I'm the mother of so-and-so who goes to the high, you know, the high school there, right? And my daughter has asthma. I say, you say yes to proposition do do to fund the school so they can build a new gym so all the kids can run in the gym. And I thought about that for a second, and I go, rewind, at the beginning, doesn't the kid have asthma? Doesn't matter if you get a new gym or not, she's still sitting on the fucking bleachers come running, come lap time. <laughs> you know, like, that was really weird. Then it goes on to, hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm the science teacher at the high school, and I say, you should give, yes, the proposition. So we have bigger tables that have electrical outputs to plug in the machinery and room for their soda pops. And I was like, did this guy really just ask for money so he could put a soda next to an electrical outlet? What is it? What science project is he trying to run? (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh my god. But that that radio commercial passed passed the bill for him. I tell people they didn't, you know, it was weird. You know, I have, I have this, um, at, at work, at, at work, there's, um, I just, I just wanted to bring this up about, you know, you're talking about like people like wanting to do, um, you know, they've, you know, we want to have this money so we can get a soda thing over here, blah, 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 kind of thing right. going on. Right. You're like, like, why are you like so serious about that? That's fucking bullshit. You know, it's like, it's like, like, it's like, like, but they take them, so, it's, it's so important. It's like. Like, we have a labor union at work, and I really think that there needs to be a labor union because we make these phone calls for all these environmental agencies. But if, if you are a good caller, you're constantly seeing a, a screen that's breaking down, like, your calling process in relation to the room and, you know, uh, what's on credit card, what your percentage is per call. You know, right. like, so, so you know, you get a few things, and then you see yourself drop, you know, or, you know, it, 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 and then, then they have all these charts, and, like, at break, they show you what your chart chart is and you have a code name you see like you know how you're doing in the chart and like you know and then if you don't make quota if you don't get at least quota within one week you get an ultimatum so you, you can only work two weeks without making quota and you're fired doesn't matter how long you've been there you could have been there for 20 years had two bad weeks you're those and your life someplace and boom you're fucking out of a job it's like it's like as long as you are on our fucking treadmill making this particular you know percentage then you you can keep coming back and you'll still have money and you know we got a pizza night for you blah 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 but you know we once you mess up you get distracted get some shitty phone calls get the wrong people have some bad luck you know you're fucking gone like that we don't give a fuck we don't give a fuck and I you know that it that bothers me and then you and you watch these people just get cut like like since I so they're always hiring they're always training somebody they're always like and you go through this pattern of like asks and how to ask and rebuttal it's all like mapped out for you and here's people like hi I'm so and so you know blah 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 and do you know that and you know it's always like you know no 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 response as well if you're a fucking good actor you know that you know you're just you know blah 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 you kind of do kind of do your pattern I mean like like I. I've gotten to be like sometimes I listen to myself give like my you know give the spill I'm like I think I go I'm fucking good I can read <laughs> copy like I'm like nobody I'm ready for the radio I'm reading it with a you know I'm, I'm, I'm I, I go I sound like a goddamn politician now you know <laughs> and uh, and and you know and and I'm good I can you know but sometimes you know I mean sometimes they still don't give it to me even when I am good you know I mean it doesn't doesn't really matter but. I mean, I've even had people tell me, you know, on the phone, you really good, you know, and I'm like, gee, thank you. They go, you sound like a real person. I go, thank you. I am a real person, you know what <laughs> I mean? And I do care about certain things, but I just don't like the way these companies treat their employees. And, you know, grassroots campaigns did it. Grassroots cam- campaigns got sued because it's, it's, they're all sister companies. They got sued before. Now they have a union formally forming against them. And, um, but it's weird. The union comes out and, and every night 
they'll have like we'll have like a speaker or whatever will come into the room about whatever environmental thing that they want us to get more informed about and be inspired to be on the phone with could be skype or someone who comes in but then like the, then at the very end of the meeting somebody from the labor union like the, the kids that go in the back you know they're they're from there they're, the, they're in the labor room and they'll come out and they'll say something like we just want everybody to know that um they're going to assign our seats again and you know and and we don't have to do that until this other labor makes us obligation so you can really sit anywhere you want to if you don't want to sit where they said you're supposed to sit you don't have to we just want everybody to know that and then you could see like the managers like their eyes go fucking like you they get to like oh, i wish they'd go away or they're perplexed by that person's going up there and i'm thinking it's kind of silly though it's like their main objective is this like you don't have to do we don't have to be told we're the labor union and we want everybody to know that you don't have to be told where to sit you can be free to sit anywhere you want to like what's the big deal about having to sign seats or not seats and why is that such you know are they giving other people certain leads better than other people based on like where they're sitting because their computer's rigged up to it? i mean like what the fuck is going on you know like, I think, like, like what, like, you know, what, what I want to say is I don't give a fuck about having a signed seat. I don't want to have to be, like, you know, just disposed of, like, fucking toilet paper because I have one goddamn two weeks well, where, you know, I, 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 I could psych myself out worrying about that. I hate that fucking pressure. Well, I find it weird if you have a union that they, they have it so easy to fire you. Right. Because most unions, that it, it that, that was what the point of starting a union was was to keep you from getting fired well that's what they really want they, they've asked for certain conditions to be met and the um it, it, it's here in, it's here in oregon it's like osperg or um os uh you know it, it's like and it's osperg and it's oh my god i'm outing them right now it's osperg and um environment oregon but right. it, but they um they they're they're down the street and they had a walk out marching in front of them they, they were protesting in front of them there's a little bit of a ruckus happening enough so that i was talking to a woman on the phone and she goes oh you're working at blah 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 i go yeah she goes so i heard you have a labor union and i go yeah we do she goes yeah i heard about that and so like people who are actually our donors are realizing that there's a little ruckus going on amongst the uh amongst the employees right yeah, I got my labor union packet. I asked for it. So. Yeah, well, I mean, if you, if you pay in your union dues, I think it'd be almost impossible to fire you. Well, they have been firing some of them, and they say that if you feel that you're being targeted, they, you know, because they took us all out to Robo Tacos. <coughs> right. And the union people did, you know, yeah. they, they, you know, and, 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 cause you know, I was there and they go, I didn't, I'm freaking broke. They go, Hey, it's taco night. I go, Oh, I love tacos. And they go, Hey, hi, we're the labor union board. Labor, did you, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know we had a labor union, you know? And so, um, I got my packet and one of the guys that works there who is part and kind of in charge, he gave me my packet. Ironically, he worked on uh, last comic standing. He worked in reality what? television. So he did all the transcribing. Right. For like the episodes and stuff, and then he was like, "I I didn't know you were on the show." I go, "Yeah, I was on the first season." And he, he goes, "Oh my god, I probably stared." I mean, like we, I, I can't I can't believe we don't know each other. Like we didn't cross paths before, and I, and, and I was and I was like, you know, and I'm like, here we are now, you know. <laughs> Both but it plays <laughs> join a labor union. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you see that crap. They're bringing it back. I know. I know. I don't even have a host. I know. You know, apparently, um, what's her name? Uh, Mar Marla, um, I, wait, I forget her name right now. S uh, Wanda Sykes. Wanda, Wanda Sykes, Sykes is, is, well, is, the, is, is the executive right? producer. She's going to be the executive producer, but they haven't, like, picked who's going to host, host it again. But that's actually, I mean, I'm, that's good for me, actually. I, I, I think it's good because it's back on the radar screen again. Yep. And so, like, when I hit, it, it means that it, it kind of, it's like, oh, last comic standing. Oh, she's first season. You know what I mean? Yep. I think that that's going to, like, work again. And, like, it's, like, when things are gone, it's like, oh, yeah, that was, like, that show. But when they bring the show back, then right. it, it still has a little, I think it's going to give a little bit extra juice. Absolutely. You That'll know? be a great marketing tool for you. Yeah, I, and then. I, I, was just, I was just curious on your thoughts of the actual show and process um okay i'll be point blank yeah thank you for asking me that because i do have a lot to say about that 
Okay. Um, yeah. You know, and you know, number one, um, I, you know, like having been through a reality television out of reality television, it is a huge social engineering tool, uh, and it's it's horrific. I mean, it, it like honestly, it makes me when it like when I think about it, it's it's like almost like going like yuck to the guy who thought that the corporations were, you know. I mean, it's the same like reaction to me now. I, I granted. It, I'm saying it, it didn't hurt me to do it. I mean, you know, it's it's not it's it, it, like the show itself it has given me um, a certain type of like a, um, a platform uh, to actually you know be on the cover of my hometown paper and with the American flag blowing marijuana smoke in the air and saying bogging loads of justice because I was in a DEA raid and medical marijuana dispensary. I mean, like. It allowed me to like, you know, like information was allowed to happen because I had had been on the show. I had a connection. It was relatively off of it. It was my hometown. They'd already done a paper. I mean, like, all this was like kind of like, you know, it, it, it you know, it's, you know, it does help to say like it's like going well. I went, you know, where's your credentials? Well, that okay. It's not the best credential, but whatever. But it's been good. But that being said, it is um, terrible to humanity. Um, it, it, it teaches Darwinism, it teaches the philosophy that you have to like stomp on somebody, get over them, and this is how awful, awful humanity is to get to what they want to do. And then they have all these celebrities and these judges, and it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's yuck. It's, it's just crap. And honestly, I think that it's actually affected the comedy community uh, in, in a negative way. Because it is like, I think some of the comics have watched that and they think that that's the way we have to be amongst one another and that's what it's about and that's how we're going to treat each other. And, you know, I, I hate to say that we're that stupid and that naive, but if you think the power of what television is doing to people, when they process something, it comes into your body, it comes out, you enact it in real life and, and more or less because why? Because it was on television. And then they had the fucking gall to edit it and call it reality television. Okay, right. now, the ethics of the show is crap. They are not, it's not an ethical show, okay? And uh, and I was on the, um, uh, yeah, they're, like, they're going to invite me back on there again. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. But, you know, it, it's like, it's like, it's like, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather come clean and say what I really fucking think because I really believe this. I'm not saying it because I didn't win or because, you know, I'm on food stamps or, you know, anything else that you want to tell me I might have been a loser of not having attained because that show makes people think that that's what you have to have. You know, I get shit from people because I don't live, like, in that box anymore. You know, I don't give a fuck. And, yeah, I don't have much. And you know what? I, I drive a car that's practically falling apart. And that was given to me by my father. You know what? I don't have any fucking money. You know what? I mean, I have to hawk a ring to pay my rent. You know what? You know, okay, yeah, I did not become that thing that that show was supposed to make me. But you know what? I don't give a fuck. You know, right. I mean, it's it's like it's like I don't care. That is an illusion. That is like something that is not it's not real. It is, it is like, it's the syrup, it's the coffee, it's the bullshit that Hollywood has created. And Hollywood, like I said before, it's the Hollywood, it's the sorcerer's wand made out of the Hollywood tree. The design of it in itself is to mind control us yep. into the matrix. It yep. is the matrix, okay? Yep. And the Illuminati is in it. I mean, you know, the powers that be, the um, media is controlled, the news is controlled, it's all down the paper mill, it's all a big fucking show. It is the fucking Wizard of Oz. Yeah, well, all right. All, I, I think all reality TV is like that, but that was... You know, and I, I think, think television's like that. I think yeah, I think absolutely. I think I think the entire entertainment business on some level is that. I'm not saying everything that goes through it has no merit or nor quality and that ends well, that, that all people are like not though. whatever. But it's like at, at the very infrastructure of what's going on, I am awaking it up from that illusion. And yep. uh, and I have some very strong thoughts about it. I do not feel like a victim. Uh, mind you, um, I, I, I have, you know, gone in another direction. Um, you know, I, it, it's like certain things happened to me personally where I woke up and became a, an, a, like, an, I, I, I cared about things. I 
said, I got to fucking take care of business right now, that what's happening in the world. And I even put my stand up on hold. I mean, I didn't go on the road anymore. I did whatever I could be of service to for cannabis legalization to, you know, whatever activist group it was. I was still doing shows. I was still like, I, wa I wrote a couple of adult films. You know, I was in one of them. I, you know, I did a medical marijuana float. I mean, I did all these creative things. I produced fundraisers, comedy fundraisers for people that were in, um, you know, incarcerated for marijuana related crimes, or they were going to stand on trial. They needed legal defense funds. I mean, that's when I was like, you know, and then I started to work in media. Like I started doing radio shows and then blogging and then becoming part of the media department of Occupy. And, you know, so my head went into like a completely different um, uh, ex experience than, um, than what, then I didn't care about like whether or not I had an agent. I didn't care about like where I was auditioning to. I didn't care about those things because those things didn't really, they, I felt like, my God, this world is, in, we, we we are in crisis. Right. We are in crisis. And it's like, and it's, 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 it's like, and I felt like I go, you know, it's like, I'm not going to, I, I have to help. I have, it, it's like, it's, it's like, if you had a typhoon, if it, 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 it's, it, on some levels, it's like realizing that the whole world just had a big typhoon hit it. And, you know, and, and it needs, it needs, it needs to be, I need to get well. I need to get well. I needed to be healed from the shit that we have endured and I, that I feel that I've endured as a human being, a religious, um, uh, upper, you know, um, overtones to cultural, um, barriers and, and, and things to, you know, oppression on like a lot of different levels. And then I just thought, you know, well, all I want to do is talk is make that funny. You know, make that interesting, make that, you know, art. And so that's where my, that's what makes me happy. That's my path. I could give a fuck. You know, it's like, it's like you be either you are like, you know, in the Greek days, you, know, you had your philosophers and every the entertainers and they were in the circle and they were doing what they were doing. They were, they were teachers, you know, they were, they, 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 they stood in their society and they, and they spun whatever they did to like make magic, whatever to happen. That's what I feel like. That's what I am. That's what I I do, and you know what's, you know, you, you who that's that's what it is. It's it's like you don't, the everything else, you know, everything else that is like that that you know, it's it's like an arcade that you can maybe just go into and and pretend that it's really cool. But after a while, you don't have any more quarters to put into it, and uh, and 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 you've had too much cotton candy. And so, you know, it's like, it's like, again, it's like, it's like, it's nothing. And that's what I think about, you know, Last Comic Standing. I mean, that's, that's my, you know, and, and to me, it's like, well, if Last Comic Standing helped me like realize that and go through that loop of, of self journey and realization as to what, you know, I'm very curious about Hollywood. I'm very curious. I look at like, you know, James Franco tweeting. I mean, you know, the whole thing that their connection to politics and LA, X and you know what you know um what's her name um uh, well you have people like Affleck Clooney I right. mean those people are, those people are gearing to be politicians you know they did a movie about Syria that Clooney was in that he got an Academy Award for I think he might have even directed it and then I then, you know and that and that's when I always felt Syria was gonna get hit with something Right. And fucking if it didn't. I mean, like, you can watch movies and just see exactly what's going to happen in the world a few years later. And you know what? And and, 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 and the actors are positioned in it. I mean, and I don't want to sound like I'm, like, fucking crazy or something like that. But I have been watching shit down the line. I have to tell you, Kevin, there are people in my life that I know in Hollywood that I'm not sure if I trust them anymore. Right. Okay. I mean, it's not so much of you. I mean, I mean, I, you know, like, trust, like, I'm, I'm like, I go, I don't know whose side you're on, because I think that there's some, I think, and I, I'm just going to say that I think that there are quite possibly some actors and people that know what's going on, and they are also a part of it. 
you know what if you're gonna if you're talking about a new world order agenda or whatever they're filmmakers actors people that are part of that team as well and they've been positioned in our politics they've been positioned in our media to again culturally design us to do certain things collectively as people absolutely have you seen the um uh, well, one the most one of the most more famous ones that came out and actually got away with it is uh, Dave Chappelle. You know, and Dave Chappelle, you know, walked away from Comedy Central, and then he went on the Actors Studio and gave that that speech about he didn't want to he didn't want to sign the deal with, because it was the Illuminati. The reason they offered him so much money is because it was the Illuminati, and he said I wasn't gonna wear a dress. He said I wanted to be the first black man who said no to wearing a dress. And then, and then, and then, you know, the guy was kind of like, huh? He's like, explain that. And he's like, name me one famous black comedian or actor that you know who hasn't worn a dress on film. Well, I'll tell you somebody who is. That was really kind of weird because I went back and looked at it and I can't. They all have. Even ones that I wasn't sure about. Even ones I was like, this guy's never done it. I've been proven wrong. I know I have watched I've listened to that interview of him say it several times and I've also took news of all the different black act, actor men that have dressed up in a dress and I went holy fucking shit he's like right and there's some videos that show them all the guys in it like with music it's and everything like that like, and you're just like oh my god I can't believe it you know they, it's they part of the, it's it part certainly of the deal. has it's part of the deal you know and um and that's what and he and, he, and I was like okay that's that's really cool uh, but the other person, there was one other. There's an actress who actually started speaking out about it, and they tried. They went after her by trying to damage her career, first of all. But when she start kept getting movie roles, they just killed it. Who's that? Brittany Murphy. <gasps> I always wonder what happened to her. I always well, is, is oh, that what is that is that what well, it is? Well, yeah. There's actually a documentary on it. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I know he put it out. And then I don't know what happened to him or what happened to the documentary, but it disappeared. Uh, but there was a documentary on it. And basically, there's a lot of things that people don't know because everybody kind of, nobody knows. It was never publicized. But basically, she started speaking out against the Illuminati. And then, and she actually, for some reason, was in court as a witness to something. Now, a lot of people have speculated that she wasn't just in the Illuminati. She was actually kind of like a spy, like a, like, a, like you know. Like, she was in there, and she gathered information, and when they brought criminal charges against people, she testified against them. That was what she actually did, um, because there's a few court cases with her giving testimony that's on record, you know? Who knows how many aren't on record? <laughs> and um, so this was going on, and apparently when she decides she, – she, she meets this guy, and they decide it's her fiancé, and they're going to get married, right? Yeah. And they live in the same house. They live together and everything. And he he says that she wants out of acting. She wants a normal life. She wants out of it all, right? Uh-huh. So once she just says that, she's like, she's like, okay, well, I get, we still got to pay the bills. So she, want, she wanted to get jobs. Well, they started blacklisting her. She couldn't get work. There was like, they were, you know, they, they, you know, there was something else, you know. She's like, they, you know, the Illuminati just told them, like, blacklist her. That's when all that shit came out that she was a drug addict. Remember, she was shooting heroin, doing all sorts of drugs. All those, all those stories hit all the newsstands. Illuminati. She's, it, it, he was like, none of that shit. He was like, that shit was all made up to try to damage and destroy her career. And then, she dies. Now, a lot of people, do you know what her autopsy and her official record of death is? What? Pneumonia. She died of pneumonia. Oh, wait, it gets better. So the husband wigs out, and he starts trying to call, like, news stations, media, newspapers. He's writing letters. He's trying to tell the world that the Illuminati killed Brittany Murphy. Ninety days later? He's dead. Pneumonia. They're, they're the only two fucking people I know who's died of pneumonia in the last decade. You know, I, I read something where um, his mom was trying to say that maybe she had black mold in the house or something like that. They're trying to, like, saying, like, you know, link, like, 
that possibility. I did read an article about that. The house. I've but been following her around a little bit, um, actually. Um, I've watched like a few. I mean, I've always been curious about what happened to her, and I, I always thought it was strange. And I started reading about it, poking around in it, and then she um, of pneumonia, and then her husband dies of pneumonia ninety days later, exactly ninety days later. It just, I don't, I don't buy that. I don't buy it. You know, I, I, I just, that's kind of like the old CIA thing. Like, hey, we found this guy. He killed himself. You know, he left his car running with the hose and the thing. And then they do the autopsy and you find that the wind, their windpipe was broke. <laughs> you yeah. know, somebody, like the old CIA chop put him in the car and did the hose thing. And no one ever looks twice. But that, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, I, I don't, pneumonia. Well, I mean, you know, there was. Did come up with anything better than that? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 plus she was young, and you know, and and and, and everything. I mean, like, like why would some, why would these young people just die this way? Their deaths were, they, they both had the same thing happen to them. And why was she testifying in all of these court cases, though? That that I thought that was weird. I thought that that was like kind of a weird subject that gets brought up. Is why you know is she. You know, a lot of people think that she was like this, like she worked, a lot of people think she worked for the Illuminati, you know, as somebody who fucking pretty much built cases. Yeah, I mean, there, other, there's... Against other people. You know, there, I mean, there is a lot of things that I've, I've, been, I've definitely been thinking about in terms of like what might my, my going down to Hollywood. I mean, like, like, you know, there's something very strange going on around Randy Quaid. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a video where, um, like he's like, you know, giving like at a press conference in front of the media and that he basically says that he felt that he was targeted. Um, he's been, he's being harassed by Hollywood the that they, that, that they come after your houses and this and that. He goes, he goes, I've lot people have been killed and, you know, good friends of mine are not alive anymore. Could Chris Penn, he said, he mentioned, um, Heath Ledger. I mean, he was like, he goes, they've been killed, you know, and, uh, and you know it, it. And I've watched that video uh, quite a few times. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, there's definitely where uh, some some um, actors seem to be like they've been killed or suffered or maybe they were sacrificed. sacrificed. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going. Where is this going? Tia Tequila is. Um, Ask Johnny Depp. You don't like to talk about that one. That's Johnny Depp's favorite question is, do you believe in this? And he says yes, and then they ask him who he sacrificed, and then he's like, F you. I don't, he's like, Jody, and then he always gets offended because everybody knows the answer already. It's River Phoenix. And absolutely. You know, that's weird that you're saying that um, right now because, uh, God, you just made a connection for me. Um, there was one day where I was, like, walking around um, downtown Portland, and there was, like, a store that had, um, you know, old magazines and stuff like that from certain eras. And I, right. my eyes fixated on um, Johnny Depp, and I looked at him for a little while, and then, I want to see part of the Illuminati, or, like, I was just looking at him, and I go, well, and then I go, whatever happened, what happened to River Phoenix? You know, like, why, what, you know, and... Um, I li and right when I turned my head, there was River Phoenix's, you know, stuff, because it was, like, from that era, right. you know, and I was like, oh, my God, and so I got on my phone, and I, I, I researched, like, River Phoenix, you know, death, Illuminati, you know, and he was making a lot of, lot of really interesting um, uh, statements on television, um, kind of saying some stuff that I don't think, like, and all the like two of the people that were on a panel, I think on Phil Donahue, one was Raul Julia, and uh, and it was River Phoenix, and the other yep. one was Lisa Bonet, and Lisa Bonet just disappeared out of fucking thin air. Um, she yep. was already talking anti-vaccine back then, and um, and then there was um, you know River, then River Phoenix was I'll dead, I'll dead. And, you know, and, and, and so, and I'm, I'm like, okay, and so now you said, who did you sacrifice? And we go, oh, we all know it's River Phoenix. So he, Johnny Depp, offered River Phoenix, and of course they wanted him gone because River Phoenix well, you was... Know the, well, you know, you know the other deal, though, right? You know, there was, okay, so Johnny Depp and River Phoenix and a very high-ranking Russian mobster who most people believe was in the Illuminati, right? 
all three owned that nightclub, the same nightclub that Mayor Phoenix was supposedly found outside overdose. Why was he outside waiting in line doing heroin? He owned the fucking place. If you own it, you don't wait in line. There was a lot of questions to be asked. Apparently, River River wanted out, I guess, and wanted to sell his shares, or or no, uh, just wanted like he wanted out of like I don't know that there's like this weird like controversy over that and that having a lot to do with it too. It ended up after River died, he uh, Johnny Depp sold his shares to the Russian instantly. Boop, there you go. He wanted out. He didn't want to be reminded of the spot where his friend died. But also that's when Johnny Depp's career took off. Connect the dots. <laughs> that's where he signed. You know? And they took out his best friend. Disney don't come cheap. <laughs> I, you know, it's just it's. I'm I'm speechless right now. I'm 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 literally, like the. I mean, to think of that even like being a possibility, and yet, as you say it, I I go fuck. It's it's real, and if it's not, but it's nothing new. Or a version <laughs> of it is. I mean, this is like really satanic. I mean, this is no, really it's really. really not, see, that's, that, this is the issue that people have is they look it, it's been see it's everybody's already been conditioned to uh, to demonize this right but if you look back at ancient history right the Egyptians built pyramids with steps and canals that ran down them and that's where they gave the offering of the gods and they took volunteers people who would voluntarily give their life and then they would march them up there. And then they would fucking kill them. They'd stab them directly in the heart. And then they would cut them open and drain the blood. And the blood would run down the stairs and through the canals. And that was their offering. This has been going on since the dawn of man. We've been, other cultures did this as a as a as a actual practice, as an offering, which is just why when you go to church in any other religion. On, like on a Sunday, if you're Catholic or Christian and you go to church, after you guys all do your mass prayer, what do you do? You make an offering. The only problem is, is back in medieval and back in ancient times, those offerings were blood offerings. And that's why, like, when you talk about voodoo, they still use goats. People are like, oh, they're killing chickens and goats. Really, they're, they're doing blood offerings. It used to be humans. It's nothing new. Several different religions, several different cultures have been doing it for years. Centuries. If you think about it, we've just been bred to, to have de to, to demon. We, it's been demonized. And we've been bred to think that that's, it, that, that's completely wrong. And that, that's just, that's inhumane. That's inhumane? I'll tell you what's inhumane. What's inhumane is when you pick up a bunch of fucking people who work for a living and pay their taxes don't do any wrong on DUI offenses and you put 40 of them in a fucking 10 by 10 room and you leave them in there for three days. That's fucking inhumane. <laughs> you know, if you if you got people willing to die to meet a god what, that they believe in, if their fucking faith is then fucking so be it. Right? If, if, you know why? If everybody wants to be Jesus and die for our sins, let them. Because isn't that what Jesus did? I mean, think about it. The Egyptians had volunteers that would come up and say, I will, and they would, isn't that the same story of Jesus? Didn't he die for our sins? Didn't he say, I'll take this one for the team? So, as it, we were taught to demon, we were, I, I believe we have been brainwashed, and I've said this before, I believe we have been brainwashed to think, backwards. I believe we have been taught that what we can do and what you know what used to be done is completely wrong and then they have perverted it into their own thing yet as soon as the doors close they're doing this shit behind closed doors. And they're using it to control us. 
I've always thought that. I like I've always thought, you know, like the Bible, the sun of God, it's the sun. Satan, I always said, is the moon. And you know, uh, and Satan's here just like the sun. The sun comes out at day, the night, the, the the moon comes out at night. But I believe the moon has more control over our gravitational pull, over the our, our ocean, our water system, and our water. Our water is 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 unique. Everything on this planet came from water. Started as a mechanism in that water. <laughs> you know. So you, you, it's very weird. Um, it's interesting where 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 I think the show went today. I know it was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. We even got some last comic standing in there. We pretty much just compared last comic standing standing to like the devil. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. <laughs> I think it is. Right. That's you know, well, weird. Is and, and this is kind of weird. I I don't know. I I, it, I think about it differently now than because I have a different perspective on stuff. Right. But um, when the show came out, the you know the first season, they advertised it in the movie theaters and this little like junket that went on in front of the Matrix, too. Right. Right. And, um, you know, what's weird about it is I didn't realize that that was happening. Right. And um, one time I went to my gym and the girl behind the counter goes, I saw you at the Matrix. <laughs> like, you saw me in the Matrix? But That's... I didn't know anything then. I mean, I was not, I was not, I didn't, I, I don't know what I know now. Oh, that would have tripped me out. And I, I go, just... I go, what? And they go, at the Matrix movies, they have like, they, they showed that show you're coming on. Before the, and I went, oh my God, it's a commercial. And my friend Beverly looked at me and she goes, it's happening. <laughs> like, because, you know, it's like we were like five months after it happening before it came out. And then, like, while in between it, I knew who was the final five, of course. You know, we signed these contracts that if you divulged where you left off in the competition before it airs, before it gets to that part for the viewing audience, you would be, like, fined, like, a million dollars. Right. And, um, you know, it's, it's like, fuck, what are you going to do to knock me up my, and, like, hit me over the head and put me in a trunk, too? Yeah, you know? like, I, if I say, you go, um, it's good, it's good, the final five is, uh, you know, Dat Fan, Test Drake, you know, uh, Rich Voss and Corey Kahaney and uh, that? Ralphie that? May, you know, I mean, uh, you know, well, no, Dave, Dave but anyways, it was, it was just like. The first season, who won that, though? Was that that Asian it was, guy? It was that, that, that fan, that, that fan. I'll tell you, i tell you about that. I'll tell you what's really weird about that, okay? Um, and, and it's going to go, it's going to go to Vietnam with it. Um, I, 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 I could tell you how, the, I, it's weird how, the, if you watch it, like, reality television, you can always really tell, like, when they're First introducing people in the competition, you can kind of tell who's going to move up, bump up to a certain level because they spend more time on your story in right. in the final, you know, setup. Right. So, um, so what they did was see. I wasn't like we all submitted these tapes. Like like once you made the first cut, they go, well, we want you to submit these. You know, we want you to submit these. Uh, you know, submit these uh, tapes. Um, that you make of yourself a five minute tape so that the producers are, 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 are reviewing, um, you know, what you're doing. And, um, and so what was really weird about this is that I actually, um, I was hanging out at this club in Pasadena one night. It was like this dating game. It was like this, like this, one of these dating games that, that they had out there, reality dating games. I go, you know, I'm kind of old. I don't know if you really would be interested in me at all. And and they go, no, well, you'd be surprised who we'd take and we wouldn't take. And, 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 you know, and so I kind of told him how old I was at the time. And he goes, okay, yeah, yeah, we can sign you into this. And I go, okay. He goes, but your friend can't come. He's too short. And I go, okay, you know. And, and he goes, but we'll take you. I'm like, all right, you know. So... I went to this dating game and I, I filled out this, you know, I filled out the paperwork for it and everything that I was getting ready to go on the road and they go, well, like well, we, we select you, um, you know, we'd have to be on these dates to be on the show. And I go, you know what? I, I don't know if I can, cause I'm actually leaving. He, I go, is it going to be in that window? And he goes, it might be. And I go, whatever. So I didn't get a call from them, but then out of the flu, I get this call 
from this show called Doggy Dog. And and the guy and the and the guy said it was like it was NBC and they're like and they go you know we we looked at your profile that you submitted for blah 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 and I go yeah and they go and they go and you you fit like what we're looking for we're looking for somebody who is attractive um, you know that looks at, you know that are athletic they look they they have athletic skills but they also ha are smart and they can have they can do like a trivia type kind of thing with the athletic thing going together and I I was like oh well. Gee, you know, that's me, you know, no, and uh, and they and they're like, well, you know, come on down. We want you. We you, would you come down and sing? We're you gonna take this test, and uh, and then we and we do like we put you on camera. We interview you, and I was like, I was like, okay. And so this guy, this weird guy that was like, I, I lived in a mansion with a bunch of other people, and it was like it, they said it, they rumored it to be it was in Altadena, California. And they rumored it to be Groucho Marx's old place. And this guy named uh, John Jean Paul, uh, you know, owned it, but he ended up living in the basement eventually. Like I, I almost started to write a sitcom based on it, but it just I never did it. So anyway, me and this guy go down to the to go to the thing, and I take the test. I take the test, and um, some of the questions were like, "Fuck, I don't know the answer." You know, like there was like, "Who are the two fingers pointing together on the Sistine Chapel?" And I'm like, "Fuck, I don't know." Beavis and Butthead. Like I just at some point I just put, I did I wrote I wrote. I wrote Beavis and Butthead because I was like, David. yeah, I, yeah, it's got in David, but, but, but the, I didn't know then. And so I just went, you know, I, I, I put it down and, and I just made up some fucking answers. I'm like, whatever. I don't, I, this is ridiculous. I don't know. I'm, I'm, that, you know, that, you know what? I've gotten so many jobs that way. But, you know, it's, that's what happened. So I went in there and, you know, she, she, you know, started interviewing me and stuff. And I was just like, I, my attitude was like, you're not picking me, you know? And I was just like, but like, you know, I, I and, they, and and so I went on and then she goes, well, so you missed 13 questions on the chest. And they go, how do you feel about it? I go, I feel horrible. Are you kidding me? I go, I thought I would have done much better than that, you know. And and she's like, and, and she goes, well, you know, I go like, you know, Beavis and Butthead, you know, on the, on the <laughs> you know, whatever we were talking. And then she goes, she goes, well, um, and she goes like, well, uh, can we ask you a couple more questions? And I'm like, sure. And they asked me a couple more questions. And I fucking filled them again. I filled both questions. You know, and she goes, Good. okay, well, we'd like to have but you. That's why you got picked, Terry. And, and they go, she goes, well, we'd like to you to, we're, we'd like to, you got to call back. We'd like you to come back. And we, you know, could you make us a videotape? I'm like, really? So I walk out and I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm coming, I'm going back, you know? So, so the guy that I was with got pissed because he's, because he's like, what do you mean you're going back? And I go, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go make this tape. So I called a friend of mine up. And I go, you know, can you feel me doing something? And I, I, and because I lived in the mansion, I, I open the gate and I go, I go, you know, like that TV show Cribs. I go, well, this is my crib. And I, you know, go and I, I, I took everybody to the house and I go, and this is my room. It's kind of flash dance. And I was like, you know, and then, and then I would go down the street and I, I ask people, I, I go, this is where I go. This is the bicycle shop. I go, can you just say some things about me for the, you know, camera and whatever. And I went into like bars and I just like with people and I was kind of, and, and. I sent it in, and it was, that one was way, way too long. It was way too long, and I think that's one of the reasons why I got X'd out, you know, because right. I told my friend Victor, I'm like, you don't, if they say five minutes, they want five minutes. You don't give them 12. Right. And I'm like, oh, okay. So when Last Comic Sandy came, and they go, we went through the first audition. They go, can you, make, can you bring us a tape? Well, I took part of the footage from that. You know, and then and then my friend Vic, I go Vic Dunlap. I go, I went to the ice house, and I and I and I go, I go what? And I I, I told everybody that got asked. I go when I when people you ask about me, they go I fucked her, I did her, I fucked her. Like in like couples, like we did her, you know, like this one. So I had all these people like paint me to be like a fucking whore, you know. Um, and then and then and then there's this really weird, weird, weird looking dude, and he goes I nailed her, and I go Dad, you're not supposed to say that. And then that was like the you know the end of the video so like at that point it was like boom I had the video you know and right. so and Vic Dunlop like took it and he was like he, he Jamie Masada didn't even get along anymore they had this big like they had a right. big fight in court over like some script and he wouldn't even let Vic go in but they they dropped the tape off and I I, I didn't know if the tape made it or not everybody else got like they used the NBC footage I think almost except and then I and they go boom they used my opening footage they actually used and cut and chopped the footage that I actually sent them in my fucking audition tape i feel kind of happy about that you know what right. i mean because it was like to me i'm like wow they use my footage um you know but uh it was it, you know so you can tell where people are going along and and you know they give you a little bit more space time well with that fan 
they took footage of him not before the that part of the competition. They already took footage of him that they filmed of him when we were doing these private, like uh, we were preparing to do the finals and at, at the Paris Hotel. And they were giving us, we all had this personal interview about like what our experience was to be on the show. How do we react? What it, how did it, what happened in our life? You know, whatever, you know, who did you call first? You know, like these kind of more like sensitive, you know, questions that you might actually get emotional over. Right. right? right. And so that fan comes up to me and he goes, oh, did you cry? And I go, yeah, I cried a little bit. And I go, did you cry? And he goes, oh yeah, man. I was like, I really like, I was, they, I was fucking bawling. And I go, okay. And so like right in the very beginning of the of, of, of it, you see him. This is the, this is you getting to know Dap Van. He is fucking bawling about in Vietnam and having to eat government cheese and all this kind of stuff. Like his like, and that he was like brought over from Vietnam to America, and like now he has this land of opportunity to make you know this to make something of himself, and you know because that's the golden opportunity of what America offers to people that they fucking bomb the. Shit shit out of and have a stupid fucking war over so that's how they introduced him onto the show from day one and when i saw that i went huh wonder what that's about and then get this and i'm and i and and i and i want to say it um because because this was 2003 this was two years after the twin towers were hit and Ralphie May does material mm. in his final competition set about how he, how he goes he goes um you know I want some tech Ron don't you want some tech Ron line him up line him up you know and I'm like I'm like fuck he just did a fucking oil joke about the fact that he wanted cheap tech run go ahead and fucking shoot people over Iraq that's my fucking joke that's yeah. me being in second place on fucking last comic standing right. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I mean what's up with that what's yeah, I, I, you know I don't know I just I they I, I my question is is where's that fan now Right. I mean, like, it, like, it doesn't, it's, you know, I don't, I don't care strong. about, like, winning never really, like, I disappeared. the whole, I mean, you know, but he did disappear. Well, here's the problem. I think this is what happened to that fan is that, um, nobody wanted to hear that Mortal Kombat and piss it in the toilet. Mortal. <laughs> he joke. did. He only, he only had like, that's all the material he had then. That was it. He had a killer, which is why nobody understood how he won. Because it's written, because here's the deal. When we yes, signed, when we signed, uh, like, people are so shocked. You know, like, read, I don't know if everybody read their contracts, but here's some things that you signed yourself off to. One was, was that um, you could be, you know, depicted favorably or unfavorably according to the producer's discretion. You could be edited, your storyline, everything about you could be changed according to the way they wanted the right. audience to view you. Number one, that was, that was in the contract. You signed it, right? Number two, they said the outcome of the show was based on the producer's discretion. Period. Yeah. I mean, so they're telling chosen. you, yes, you were in a competition, but this is not really a competition. It is because like the, the outcome of the show is at the producer's discretion. That means they can fucking pick the winner if they, they want to. The and they do. They do pick the And they the do pick the winner. They, 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 before that show even started, they know who was going to win. That, you know, like that's not my whole, that's my whole point. Any, you said it, it's entertainment. It's entertainment. I knew it was entertainment when I was going into it. Like I already, like I already knew. Like, like I, I mean, I, I, I knew what it was. And so my goal was to make a compelling story, and to be as memorable as possible for as long I was as I was there. Well, and then to like make my own character arc, and then like like live each like camera time moment that I had to the best right. of my ability, looking at it as a whole picture. I never saw myself as the winner. Right. No, no. But in reality, though, you are. Because the right. guy who did win, where is he now? Right? Yeah. You didn't win, but you've been able to ride that for so you know for so for this, for this long. And even now, when they go and put this other season out, you'll be right back on top again, riding that same gravy train. But my point is, right. it's worked better for you than it did for him. You're well, still doing comedy.
comedy. This guy went to Vietnam and got taken out by like a tornado or something. Or a, like no, a I mean, no, he's still doing comedy, I, I believe. I, I did see him like I, I, I saw him somewhere. Um, you know, uh, but the whole thing, the, the whole thing is like, despite show whatever the show's illusion promised you. You know, being a comic is being a comic. You know, you're always going to, like, if you, if you, if this is what you love to do and it's, it's an art form, like, for me, it's like, you're always going to grow. Like, I think about myself, like, how I was on the show now, like, I'm light years, uh, as, as, I think, as, as a comedian than I was then. I mean, to me, I was like, oh, I look at that material, I'm like, oh, my God, I look at the way I looked, dressed, do. talked about everything it's, it's like i'm almost like a different person now you better call wanda you better call wanda because they they should do just like mtv does mtv will take will do like four seasons different seasons of a stupid shows and then the next season they'll take all the losers from those shows and make them compete or something and that show gets more views than anything so if they took a, if they did like a like a <coughs> Who's who, or like the comedians uh, from last comic, like, you know, all the comics that never won from last <coughs> comic Andy, right? Who weren't who weren't already famous? Like, I mean, you couldn't go you couldn't go put Ralphie May up in there now. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, you know, so you would have you you'd have to use discretion. You would be a perfect candidate. And, and, and it's still entertainment, whether you win whether you win or lose. You know the rules, but. I mean, honestly, let's be honest. If you got offered to do it again, would you? Well, I mean, like, if they were to yes. do, like, let, let's say they were to do a, yeah. I mean, if well, they brought me back to the show again for whatever reason, of course. I mean, you know, I, I mean, here's the thing, too. You know, like, I, I am a part of that. You know, like, I mean, I feel like I'm part of that branding you know i was part of the first cast we were the cast that made it a success we were the breakthrough cast that branded the show Absolutely. you know so you know there's something that, like usually like at some point they will recap the first cast you Absolutely. know and they might do it now i mean you know they might go hey we're back well this is where we were this is this is this is this is last comic standing and right. you know no matter what i do you know like um you know like i like that and I and, and I don't want to think negative about that. I, I I am one of that top ten first season one of three women, you know, right. to like to actually be part of that brand new show, and it was exciting. It I knew at that time. That's why I wanted to do it so bad. I go, this is it. There will be nothing. This is the first of something in a way that nobody's ever seen before, and I get to be part of that. And I, I always felt, I've always felt that that was special. I thought that's a special thing to experience um, in terms of like pop culture, because it's a part of pop culture. And I, I don't want to, you know, look back and, and I, I don't want to feel like, I want to love all the wonderful moments I had about being on the show, all the wonderful people, like the great people that I got to, you know, work with, you know, I mean, there's, there's this other side too. Yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, part of social engineering and yeah, you know, this and that and that, but it also was really good to me too. And so, you know, you, you got to look at everything that, you know, everything that you look at from that sense, but is it an illusion? Yes. Um, would I want to do it? I mean, it, it, I like this kind of reality programming, you know, yeah. I mean, like in sense, like, we, you know, we are actually doing a form of reality, you know, entertainment. This, this is what reality TV should be. This is right. 100% un scripted we right. don't come in with a list of topics and pre-made things to say right it's pretty it, it, it is raw and it, it, it this is what it is this is what people should be talking about you know like i'm, I'm really you know i get really upset just watching the media in general because the things that i see on tv i wonder why are we talking about these things why is this news do, do, is any why do people think they care about this and if they do why? Because they shouldn't. Why do we care what other people are doing? Why don't you care about what you're fucking doing? You know? Why don't you care about what you do in life? Quit fucking thinking about, oh my god, Miley Cyrus is twerking and talking shit about Matt Lauer. Lady Gaga's coming out from marijuana. All these celebrities are doing all sorts of stupid shit to get fucking FaceTime. And you're giving it to them. And, and, and when people give it to them, you, it, 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 you know, and it's, it, it's the whole world is doing it. it it's, it's just insane. And I watch them get memorized. And I wonder at that point, is it a form of brain control? Is it a form of, you know, um, and I wonder sometimes because I think things and I write things down and I, I do things. 
and then like six months later, I see it happening professionally. Like somebody else does it, and I, like, and they're doing it, and I'm like, how does this? How did this just happen? How is? How are? How are they extracting these ideas from me? And I start thinking it's from these frequencies, like. You know, it's really weird. Is I, I looked into this elf, right? And if elf exists, then why couldn't they do it through your TV or your computer or anything else, right? Because the brain does work on electrical neurons, and electrical neurons can travel through a frequency. If you couldn't, then how can you hear a radio? Right. Um. You know, uh, but so technically, they, uh, it just makes sense. And I believe that's how that, it's the same thing about religion. When you get enough, pe- it's the same theory of when you get enough people believing in the same thing, no matter how false it is, if you get enough people to believe in it, it becomes fact. Right? Why is that? It's because you get enough people on the same frequency, you can fucking. Yeah. Frequency. Yeah. You know, they're different planes, but they're everywhere. Um, and, you know, I, I find life, life more exciting now, um, the, you know, like, I, I, life is super exciting right now, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I feel like as an artist, you know, I feel free, I mean, like, like, I, I just, I go, fuck it, I just, I just do what I want, and then, and then, you know, if somebody gives me an opportunity to do something, I take the opportunity, you know, I mean, like, I mean, I, I, I liked working on those two adult, those adult movies. I mean, that's a fucking great experience. And, you know, I mean, like, like just the different projects. I'm more into, like, experiencing and collaborating and doing stuff. And, you know, especially now I love to just combine activism with it. Like, art activism is what I call it. You know, I mean, this is like right now, I mean, if, if they're going to fucking shut us down... You know what I mean? Or they want to shut us down. I'm going full bore. I don't care. Every day, you know, I'm just going to do it, put it up, it, upload it, upload it, upload it, upload it, upload it. You know, the window is open, so just go for it. You know, it's like, and, um, and you know, and I'm just looking to, like, be able to, like, you know, have the means and the resources to do it and not be stressed out and be, have food on my table and have some fun doing it and, you know, be around friends and, like, hey, let's fucking do this shit. You know, I mean, you know, that is far more interesting. I'm going to say it. That's far more interesting than anything that that show could have ever promised me. You know, I mean, right. it's, it's like it's like because it's like what they never gave it to them anyways. It's basically like this is what I requite. I, I, I say about last coming standing my experience every like in reality television. It reminds me of like a 1970s era film about the depression called They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Okay, just listen to the title. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, basically you have, it's fucking Illuminati bullshit. It's like they take these poorly little people that want to like somehow, you know, be famous or, you know, like have the nugget or, you know, whatever, Donald Trump's fucking thing, you know, I mean, like The Apprentice and, you know, all these people like playing this, like as if there's some like part of what, they get to be in the big leads. Let me go, you know, let me be a part of your fucking club. You know what? Fuck you. You know what I mean? It's, It's like, like it's the same thing with the Olympics. It's like, oh, here's our slaves. Here's the best slave over here. It's like the gladiator days are not over. They've been existing. You know, they just they just slice and dice it. They make now we get to wear like you know cheap perfume and like you know have five minutes of fame while it happens to us. And there's no difference. Absolutely. That's what I think the about gladiator it. Gladiator days, even more fucked up. Even how I know that there's like something in control that's fucked up. They just took out of the Olympics wrestling. They said it's not a sport. It's not an Olympic sport. It's not an Olympic sport. Wrestling is not an Olympic. Wrestling is the Olympic sport. It is what started the Olympics. Roman Greco wrestling started the Olympics. Do you not know what gladiators did? Do you not know when they put two men in a you know, they, That's what it was. It's exactly what it was. Oh, anyway, um, we have been, it, we've almost been doing this for two hours tonight. This is a long one. It was a good one, though. It we was. Got, I think we, 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 we really had a good trips episode where we just covered all sorts of crazy different topics in one episode. Right. It was fun. You know, I think I'm going to tie like, you have to hear this. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a good one. That's a clean title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. 
And that way we're not outing anything that we talked about either. But if they, it just says you have to, because they have to hear this. So I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what will happen. I don't want to red flag it with, you know, um, you know, secret WikiLeaks document or anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, literally just, that, yeah, just yeah, let no. people like, you, you have to hear this. That's it. Yeah. See what happens. See okay. What happens. All right. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Good night. Bye.